Hi, my name is Tony Montefosco. I'm here today to show the beginner watch repairman how to disassemble his watch, clean it, reassemble it, and put it back in the case. Showing you the proper procedure of going through this and the nomenclature of the parts and all their functions. There are some basic tools that you're going to need to get started with. I have some on display here, which are basic tools. This is a piece of piss wood, spelled P-I-T-H. Piece of radico, or a similar product. Three adjustable movement holders, one for lady watches, one for gent watches, and one for pocket watches. A piece of peg wood, two different type tweezers, a number five tweezer, a number three tweezer, a movement gauge, a mainspring gauge, a hand remover, a set of capillary oilers, they don't have to be capillaries, they can be dip oilers as well like these here. I like the capillaries, they're a little easier to work with and a little quicker. A set of assortment of screwdrivers, some manipulating tools, a hand blower, a mainspring winder, a bench block, a case opener, a cannon pinion remover, a small compass, a waterproof wrench, a dust off brush, and a couple eye loops, a 5 power and a 10 power. I don't know if I mentioned the bench block, the bench block also. These are some of the tools you're going to need to get started with. If you have access to a demagnetizer, it's fine. If not, it can be done without the first couple of tries. What I'd like to show you now is a chart describing the nomenclature of all parts of the watch. Now this is a chart showing you the breakdown of the watch called the nomenclature. These charts can be obtained sometimes from the material houses what are illustrated in a lot of the repair manuals. They're a good chart to have, a guide to go by when you're getting started. It consists of the stem and crown assembly, the winding pinion, the clutch wheel, the set wheel, the minute wheel, hour wheel, cannon pinion, Hour hand, minute hand, at a, a set bridge, a clutch lever. Underneath the clutch lever is a clutch spring, and a setting lever, which is also called a setting bridge. And this is the main plate of the watch. Now I'll turn it over and I'll show you the other side. Now this is the back side of the watch, the train side. It consists of the barrel bridge with three screws in it, ratchet wheel, ratchet wheel screw, the crown wheel, crown wheel screw, has a click, a click screw, and a click spring, which activates the ratchet wheel, which allows it to ratchet so you can wind the mainspring. 
Underneath that is the barrel assembly, consisting of the main barrel, the main spring, the barrel arbor, and the barrel cover. Next we have the train bridge. Also this has three screws in it. Now you have to be careful with some of these screws. As you take them out, look them over. Because some of them may be different sizes and you don't want to put them in the, in the wrong position. Underneath the train bridge, you have the center wheel and pinion, the third wheel and pinion, fourth wheel and pinion, and the escape wheel and pinion. Had the fork assembly, the pallet bridge with the pallet screw, and the balance assembly. Here the balance is knocked down to show you the different components, but in simply cleaning the watch with no repairs to be made, it's not necessary to disassemble this balance assembly. You can clean it all in one unit. It consists of the balance wheel, the balance staff, the roller table with the jewel, the hairspring with a hairspring stud, and covering all of that is the balance bridge. Again, with one screw, this screw sometimes is a little different than these other ones, so be careful. The regulator, the hole jewel, the cap jewel, and the stud screw. The stud screw is for when the hairspring is put into the stud hole and the screw locks it in place. Now it's a good practice to memorize these names of these parts so that when you have to watch a part you don't have to refer to the chart too often. But it's a good chart to have when you're first starting and getting acquainted with the watch and all its parts. Now I'd like to show you some books that might be available. Some of these books are excellent books for anybody to have in their library, whether you're a beginner or an advanced watch repairman. This one is called The Watch Repairman, The Watch Repairs Manual by Henry B. Freed. This book was used a lot up in the Northeast in some of the colleges and tech schools when Henry was teaching watch repair. Chapter 2 in this book has an excellent chapter on how to get started. This is chapter 2 in the book, Cleaning and Overhauling a Watch Movement. It's an excellent chapter in this book for beginners and also for people that have been repairing watches for some time. Another excellent book is the Joseph Bolivar School of Watchmaking. This book was widely used at the Bolivar School as a training manual for all our potential watchmakers. It also has excellent chapters in it for either beginners and advanced. I've had this book for about 30 years and from time to time I still refer to different articles in the book which help me with some of the problems that I may have. These books might be available either through book dealers or used book dealers or in libraries. Still another good book. This book has been reprinted again. It's back on the market as of the Henry Freed 
repair manual. Uh, there are some new additions printed out and they are available today. This is the Practical Watch Repairing by Donald D. Carl. Also an excellent, excellent book for either beginners or watch repairmen. Okay, I'll be introduced you to watch repair. I'm going to introduce you to some of the cases that are out today. The most common ones are the snapback and the screwback. So you're familiar with what the cases are and how to get them open. This happens to be a Bova with a black dial, kind of a nice looking watch. It has a snapback on the back. And with your, with your case wrench, your case knife, there's a little raised lip on the cover. Just pry your knife under there, pop the cover loose, like that. And the, and the cover comes, comes right on off. Now this one happens to be a waterproof. This is where your waterproof wrench comes in handy. As you'll notice on the back, there are notches all around the, the back to get it off. And to do so, set your wrench in the notches and give it, give it some turns. And then with your tweezer, you can finish taking it off, like so. And that takes, your, that takes your waterproof off. This happens to be an automatic, has the oscillator on the back. That's why the bubble back. So another type of waterproof. This is an Accutron. Also has a screw back, but it's a two-piece back. There's a case ring, there's a lock ring on the outside, and then the main body of the back. Now, the order, in order to open this successfully, you should have an Accutron wrench, which looks like this. It's called the L wrench. What it is, it sets in very snug to the to the part and you just unscrew the ring off and you don't do any damage to the back of the case. This happens to be a Timex electronic which has a little bit different back than some of the others. It's also a snap back but it has a cavity for the battery. So you have to make sure that when you put it on that you put the cavity over the top of the battery. And it also has a lip, a raised lip on the bottom. Just put your blade under there and pry it off. And this is a digital watch. The reason why I'm showing you this is because when you look at the back, it looks like it's a screw back. But it really isn't a screw back, it's a snap back. See this little cutout in the body of the case? You take your, your case knife, put it underneath there, pry it up, and the back pops off. So don't confuse yourself that this is a screw back and try to put an automatic screw wrench on it because if you do you, you're not going to get anywhere and all you're going to do is, is destroy the back of the case. So at the top of the program I showed you some tools that you basic tools that you need and as we go along I'll show you the use of some of them as we go along. 
this happens to be a movement gauge. And what you do with a movement gauge is you measure the size of the movement. All switch watches are measured by lines. All American watches are measured by size. So this is this is a Bulova ten and a half line movement. And the caliper number, which is on the back of the watch, is a, is a 10 BC. Some caliper movements are marked on the back plate, some are underneath the balance, and others are underneath the dial. But generally you'll find a caliper number somewhere on the watch. Some very early watches were not caliberized, but they can be identified by another system. <clears throat> now I mentioned Pisswood at the beginning of the program. Primarily what we use Pisswood for is that once the watch is cleaned, you take your wheels and you run them in the Pisswood as such to clean off any debris that may be on the pivot so that you have a nice clean pivot. Like so. I also mentioned a small compass. What we do with the compass is you set it on the top of the balance wheel. If your needle stays stationary, pointing north, and you know the watch is not magnetized. If the needle goes back and forth like this, then the watch is magnetized. So you have to demagnetize the watch. Also mentioned a dust off brush. What we do with the dust off brush is we can get rid of any debris that's on the dial or inside the case. And with the hand blower, just blow it out. That'll keep our watch just free when we remount it back into the case. Another item I mentioned was Radico. What Radico is, it's a gummy-like substance, kind of chewy, almost like a bubble gum. And what we do with the Radico, is once the watch is cleaned and you happen to get a fingerprint on it, you take the Radico and you can remove whatever fingerprints or foreign matter that's on the watch just by picking it off like that. Now we'll go ahead and start taking the watch apart. First thing I do is I cover and remove the hand. I cover the watch with a piece of plastic. And with my hand remover, I'm going to block you out here, slip it under the hands, squeeze it, and the hands come off. Remove the plastic. My hands are here. 
That way I don't scratch up the dial and I don't lose the hands. Now the first thing I want to do, I want to take off the dial. On the side of the movement, there are two dial screws, one on this side, one on this side. I'll loosen up the dial screws. And I'll take the dial off. By doing so, I take the second hand with it. Because it's a very small hand and I don't want to lose it. I'll put that in the container with the other hands. Now the first thing I want to take off is the hour wheel and the hour wheel washer, the dial washer. <clears throat> if the watch has a dial washer on it, make sure you replace the dial washer when you replace the hour wheel. Next, I'll take off the cannon pinion. I use my cannon pinion remover, place it over the top of the cannon pinion, squeeze it, and the cannon pinion comes out like that. Okay, the first thing we want to do is we want to let the power down. As you see, the watch is running, so there's, there's plenty of power on it. By doing that, you turn the crown a little bit. Get a hold of the click. Push the click aside and let the power come down. until there's no power left in it. The watch will stop. And now we know we have the power harnessed and we can proceed to take the clock apart. <coughs> the watch apart, I keep calling it a clock. Okay, the first thing I want to do is get rid of the, the balance so I don't hurt it. And what I like to do is I loosen my stud screw so I can separate the balance from the balance bridge once I get it loose. Take out the balance bridge screw. And at the base of the balance bridge is a cutout. Insert your screwdriver, pry it up slowly, and loosen the bridge. Grab a hold of it with your tweezer. Give the movement a couple of taps and the balance comes out. Now with those manipulating tools I told you about in the beginning, this is a pointed tool like a needle. I'll take and I'll push that stud out of the stud hole and separate the balance from the bridge. And once you have the balance separated from the bridge, it's a good practice to take this stud screw and tighten it down. Because when it's in the cleaning machine with the agitation, it will have a tendency to loosen up and get lost in the solution. It's a very tiny screw. So tighten it down so you don't lose it. Now we're going to put all these parts in the basket because I have a cleaning machine and these, these are what the baskets look like. 
I set my balance. I set my balance in one compartment, and I put my balance bridge in a lower compartment. I keep them all separated. I'll also put the balance screw in there. So now that we have the watch apart, the power harness and everything, we can proceed to take the watch apart. First thing I want to take off will be my ratchet screw. I like to caution you a little bit when you select the screwdriver to take out a screw, try to see that the, the blade of the screwdriver covers about 90% of the channel of the screw. So you don't have a tendency to slip off of it and bar up the screw head. Sometimes I see screw heads so badly marred and damaged that it's difficult to get them out. So select the right screwdriver. Take the ratchet screw off. Place it in the basket with the rest of your screws. I'll remove the ratchet wheel. Put that in a lower compartment. Now with another screwdriver, which fits these smaller screws, I'll take off the bridge. Now with the screws removed, like I said, there's a cut underneath all these plates. So make sure you loosen, loosen the plate before you try to lift it off. Take your tweeter and lift it off. Now there's some parts in a watch just to clean it. You don't have to really take apart unless there's something wrong with them. Like the crown wheel is here. The crown wheel screw, the click, the click screw, and the click spring. Unless these parts are damaged, there's no reason to really take them out. So you can leave them as they are. Now I can take my barrel out. I can do it out. And I'll go through this mainspring as we go along. Now I'll take off the train bridge. Okay, here again, I loosen up underneath the bridge, and I'll remove the bridge. It doesn't look too bad. A little bit of dirt in there, but we're going to clean it up anyhow. Now I'll take out my center wheel, put that in the basket, my third wheel, my fourth wheel, and my escape wheel. Next I have the pallet bridge. Take out the pallet bridge screw. Pry the bridge loose. And remove the bridge. Remove the bridge, the pallet came with it, so it tells me that the jewel hole in the pallet bridge is dirty. It's probably why the watch wasn't running so good. Now we'll put this in the compartment. Now all I have left is my setting parts. 
Now normally, I wouldn't take these parts out of the watch unless there's something wrong with them, but I'm going to go through it with you today so you can understand it. This is the detent screw that locks the stem in place. Give it about one and a half to two turns and you can remove the stem. You can put that in the basket also to clean it up. Next I'll take out the winding pinion and the clutch wheel. Right, now I'm going to take off the setting parts. My setting bridge, my clutch lever, clutch lever spring under there, and the detent which held the stem in. And the minute wheel will take that off also. And there's two screws here. These are very small, tiny screws, so be very careful of them. I can remove my shutting bridge. Put that in the basket. Take out my minute wheel. My setting wheel. And this is a clutch lever and a clutch lever spring. Be very careful when you take this off so that it doesn't fly away on you. What I like to do is I have to place my finger over it, kind of blocky a little bit, but I put my finger over the back portion of it, and then with my tweezer, I'll take the spring and I'll lift it up out of the, from behind the, the clutch lever. like so. That way I don't lose it. It's, it is a spring and it won't give you trouble if you lose it. Now take out the clutch lever. I'm going to leave the detent or the set lever in. It, it had two names. It has a set lever name and it also has a detent. It's screwed in with a screw on the opposite side. And unless there's something wrong with it, there's really no reason to take it out. Now we're ready to clean this watch. Place all the parts in the basket. Put the plates and bridges in the bottom. Put my main plate in the middle. And I'll put my small parts on the top compartment. I made a little security screen here. I have a fine mesh screen. Give me double protection keeping those parts from falling out while they're being agitated in the solution. Now I'll put that onto the machine and we'll clean it all up. Okay, for those of you that don't have a cleaning method or a cleaning machine of any kind. Cleaning can be done by hand. You're going to do one or two watches and you don't want to invest in a machine. Take all your parts and string them on a wire. Put all your plates and bridges on one wire and all your wheels 
on another wire. Let them soak in the cleaning solution. From time to time, agitate them a little bit. If you have anything real stubborn, take a small artist brush and kind of swap them down a little bit. And take any stubborn debris off that might be on there. After they've soaked for a while, shake them off real good. Put them in rinse number one. Let them sit in there for a while, agitate them periodically, rinse them off, and then go into rinse number two. Again, let them soak a while, agitate them, rinse them off, and with a household hair dryer, you can come along and just blow them dry. And that'll give you a nice, satisfactory job for doing one or two watches. But like I say, a lot of these machines are very inexpensive. You can find them in the NWCC marks. I see them for around $50 or less. If you're going to get a program, I tell you on a tool display, I mentioned the mainspring gauge. Now that we're going to replace the mainspring, I can show you what the gauge is. This is the mainspring gauge. It's used when we replace the mainspring and the watch, either be broken or it'll be set and worn out. So we have to replace it with a fresh one. The way we do that, the outer edges are the width, the center is the strength, and we measure it with a ruler by the length. Place it in the one that fits the best, number seven. Run it in the middle. Number of strength is 11. We take a ruler. We stretch it out. Looks like about 11 and a half. And that's the way you order it when you order the mainspring. This is what the envelope looks like. I'm going to replace it with an unbreakable. This has a, an old-fashioned steel one in it. Up, I got it upside down, don't I? <laughs> you measure the width, the strength, and the length. And the time to do that is when you take it out of the barrel and it's all curled up like this. That mainspring has lost all its strength. So it's not a good idea to put this one back in again. Just replace it with a fresh one. What the mainspring should look like is an S turn. That's when it has its full strength. I'm going to replace it. When you get the replacement, it looks like this. It comes already wrapped in a container. And what you do with it is you place it on the top of your barrel, find the right direction that you're going in, and then just press it right into the barrel. But I'm going to undo this one and show you how we wind it on a mainspring winder. Okay, we have our movement all cleaned. I'll take out my barrel so I can wind the mainspring into it. And my arbor. Put these aside. One thing you ought to get into practice of when you're working on watches, try to keep your bench and your work area clean. Don't fill it up with a bunch of debris or watches that you're waiting for parts for. 
God forbid something should snap out of your tweezers, you'll have a tough job trying to find it. So keep your bench and your work area clean. Another thing is you should sit very comfortable to your work area. Try to sit in a position where you can get your arms and elbows up on the top of the work table with your back nice and straight so you're not stooped over and get tired out at the end of the day and all fatigued because you're bent over your work. So sit comfortable. Now we're going to wind this mainspring into the barrel. We're going to use the mainspring winder that I showed you in the beginning of the program. I'll put these aside so I don't knock them off the table. The first thing you have to do is determine in what direction the mainspring is going to go into the barrel. By looking at the wall of the barrel, you'll see a cutout on the wall of the barrel. And on the edge of your mainspring, there's what they call a, a tongue. And the tongue catches onto the cutout in the barrel, anchors it so that the mainspring can be wound. So by looking at the cut in the barrel, this mainspring goes in a counterclockwise direction. And that's the way we're going to wind it up. Place your mainspring on the arbor in the direction that you want to come, counterclockwise. Get this out of the way. Wind it up inside the holder until there's no more spring left. I use my finger to kind of hold the tension on it until I get it all wound up. You probably noticed during the course of the program I've got some protection on my two front fingers. They're Playtex fingers and what they do is they keep me from getting fingerprints all over everything that I'm working on. Now once you got it all wound up in the, in the barrel, in the holder, back it off and take the arbor out. Like so. Now we have the mainspring all wound up inside the holder. What we have to do here is transfer it into the barrel. I'll try to place the end of the tongue, which is right here, as close as I can to the cutout and the wall of the barrel. which is right there. Place the, place the mainspring inside the, the barrel. There's a plunger on the top. Press the plunger and release the spring into the barrel. Now the spring, the mainspring is all wound inside, inside the cover. Okay. I take my barrel arbor. Make sure you put it in at the right direction. On the barrel arbor, there's a hook right on, right on the end here, right here. That hook goes into the hole that's in the center of the mainspring. Place it in the barrel. Once you have the arbor in, you place the cover on. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to I'm going to put a little lubrication 
on that mainspring. And I take my capillary oiler and I just put a nice bead of oil right around and a little bit on the barrel cover. I take the cover, place it on the top of the barrel, over the arbor, press it down, and I hold it between my fingers, and I kind of squeeze it, and I rotate it, snapping the cover into position. Like so. Now we're ready for insulation. Okay, now it's time to put this movement back together again. What I like to do is, I like to lay out my work in the order that I'm going to put it back in. As you see here, I have my escape wheel, my fourth wheel, my third wheel, and my center wheel. We just go in the reverse of the order that we took them out in. First I'll put in my escape wheel. My fourth wheel. third wheel yep. and my center wheel Now make sure when you have all these wheels in position that the wheels and the pinions are all meshed together so that you have them in the right upright position and not upside down. Now I can go ahead and put my plate on. Keep my hands out of your way so you can see what I'm doing. I like to put one screw in there to kind of stabilize things a little bit. Don't screw this screw down too tight. Just make it snug. Because there's another, <coughs> another test we have to make here. Make sure that we have everything in place. Okay, the wheels all turn nice and freely. Check for end shake. Make sure the wheels all go up and down nice and comfortably. Now we can go ahead and tighten it down. Never tighten down anything tight until you're absolutely sure. But God forbid you don't have a pivot in a hull, you're going to break it and have a costly repair. Okay, they're all down nice and tight. My train is still nice and free. It tells me that everything's in the right order. 
Now I'll go ahead and put my barrel in. Put it under the center wheel. Put my barrel bridge on. Make sure that the barrel is free. And put in my screws. Now I can put in my ratchet wheel. Ratchet wheel has a square hole in it which fits on the square of the arbor of the mainspring. Put my screw on. down. Everything running nice and free. My train is free. I'll put a little bit of power on on the ratchet wheel. But it tells me everything is running nice and nice and free. Now I'll go ahead and boil this watch. Center wheel, third wheel, fourth wheel, and my hold jaw. I turn it over, and I'll do the other side. Hard to keep my fingers out of your way. I'll order my middle wheel post, my third wheel, my intermediate wheel post. The center wheel and cannon pinion post, fourth wheel, escape wheel. Now I can go ahead and put my setting parts in. Okay, now we'll put in the setting parts. First part I'll put on is the cannon pinion. Goes on the center post and just snap it into place. My minute wheel, my set wheel, or intermediate wheel, whichever you want to call it. And my clutch wheel. I want you to pay special attention to the clutch wheel. It has two different type T's on it. The teeth on the bottom, which engages the set wheel, are straight teeth. You can see that all right. These are straight teeth on the bottom, and the top have a ratchet type teeth, which engages the winding pinion. What I'll do here while I have it open, I will oil the ratchet part at the top. Just put a little trace of oil on there. And make sure that the straight teeth are down, engaging the setting wheel. And I can put in my winding pinion. At this point, I'll put in my stem, trying to hold everything that I have there. That'll hold everything in place for me. Now 
And the next piece I'll put in is my clutch lever. The clutch lever goes into the cutout in the clutch wheel. And then sets up on the posts. And now we have to put in this little nasty spring again. And I do the same thing putting it in as I did when I took it out. I'll place the bottom part in. And I'll put my finger over the, the back end of it. So I can take the spring and snap it into position. Just like that. I'll show you that a little bit up close so you can get a better idea of what's there. Here's the clutch lever spring and lays up against the clutch. Clutch lever, I should say, I'm sorry. Now I can put on the setting bridge. two screws there. See that my action is working fine. Pull the stem out. And it goes in a setting position, winding position, setting position, sets the hands. So that's working fine. Okay, now we're ready to put in our escapement. I'll put in the pallet. Before I put the pallet in, I'll put a little a oil of faces of the pallet stones. Put a slick of oil there and a little slick of oil there. You don't oil the pallet arbor, but you oil the pallet stones. Power in position. Put the bridge on. Make sure it's in the it's in the jewel hall. Snug down the screw. Again, don't tighten it down too tight. Double check and see that your pallet is free and there's end shake in it. And you go ahead and lock it down. Pallet's nice and free. You can see that. Power runs up and down. It tells me it's nice and free. Now I can go ahead and put my balance together. Now remember when we put the balance bridge in the cleaning machine, we tightened up the screw. So now it's time to back it off. So we can get the stud hole, the stud in the stud hole. The stud that's on the mainspring 
Hairspring. On a hairspring. This stud on a hairspring, which is right here, goes into the hole where the stud screw is. Push it over the hole and press it in. Put your screwdriver, take and tighten up the screw. Once you have it tightened down nice and tight, turn it over. This happens to be a Breguet hairspring, which has an open regulator pin. And make sure that the hairspring is engaged into the regulator so you get the proper timing on your watch. Now we're ready to put the balance back into the watch. Pick it up by its bridge, slip it under the center wheel, into the jewel hole, and then bring your, bring your bridge around. And then we have our watch all running. Turn it over. I'll put the hour wheel on and the dial. Okay, now we're ready to put the finishing touches on. I'll put this power wheel on with the dial washer I can put the dial on get your hands my hands out of your way tighten up Tighten up those dial screws on the side. One here. And one on the other side. Now I can put the hands on. second hand on first for time that long pivot on the fourth wheel friction fit, just push it down tight with, with your tweezer, set it sharply at 12 o'clock, and you can put the men in the hand on. Put the hand 
line also presses on. Line it up with the 12 o'clock marker. It presses home all the way. Now we have our hands we can set. I'm up to 3 o'clock, it's on the marker. Turn it over. And we've got a nice running watch. Now we'll put it in the case. And this concludes our program for beginner watchmakers as an introductory to watchmaking. Hope I've been some help to you. I'm sorry if I got my fingers in your way, but sometimes it's difficult. Until we meet again, may the clock keep on ticking forever. Thank you all for coming.